Hello. So I want to talk about taking one step at a time, especially when we're trying to reconnect with our dogs through the food that they eat. And it's really important because even though we're going, we're going to be taking one step at a time, it is indeed actually a universal process because the pathway that we go on um, takes into account a, a global perspective, but it also um, means that we're looking at things from the point of view of behaviour and looking at behaviour is a universal concept as well. And um, so we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how that all links together. So first of all, with the science when it comes to our dog's diets and cat's diets, um, the science doesn't really know and there's lots of conflicting science out there and of course. So we, uh, we, because of this confusion, um, this can put us in a, a place of fear. So when we're in a place of fear, we really don't know which way to go and then we're constantly looking for the best recommendations, the best things to do, the best way to do things. And that leads us down a pathway of not doing anything. And it also disconnects us from our dogs. So what I want to do is go through some footage. And the first one is a bit of a starter kit, if you like, looking at reprioritizing um, things the way we see diet um, and when it comes to our dog's diet. So we've got some tomatoes that are on sale there. That's really good. Um, we've got some black rice, whole grain oats, blueberries, brown rice, spinach, sweet potatoes, wild sardines. That's a nice form of protein, no added salt in spring water, chicken and beef. We've got some lean mince here, 90% meat, 10% fat. And also transitioning over to a home-based diet, reprioritizing the, the, our diet towards a home-based diet means that we're also giving our dogs filtered water and ourselves filtered water. And this is a really nice, nice um, filter here. And it's a 10 litre filter and it takes ceramic cartridges as and as you can see, it filters out 99.9% of bacteria, amoeba, chlorine, iron, copper, and also things like heavy metals, also pesticides like dieldrin. I mean, that's, that's still around and chloroform. That's worrying as well. Now, I don't want you to get too caught up in the macronutrients, what I've just shown you there, the proteins versus the carbohydrates. Um, versus the fats. I just want you to make the connection between the food that you eat as a human, depending on what choices you make, um, can also, uh, you can also reprioritize your diet um, by reconnecting with your dog and shifting them over to a whole foods diet using a starter kit, if you like, of just those range of nutrients that I just showed you there in that video. Now, we might say, okay, first of all, when we're reprioritizing how we see the word diet, we want to make conscious decisions and conscious choices, a conscious transition over to whole, food, whole foods, moving away from a complete dry food diet or a complete raw food diet, pet food diet that is, including treats, also making sure that it's emotionally satisfying from our dog's point of view and our cat's point of view, if we're talking about cats as well, but predominantly I'm talking about dogs, um, and that's provided in a way where we're giving them um, opportunities to forage, use their nose, hunt out their food. And you can see Marco and Morty in the background here foraging for their, a portion of their total volume of food, which just happened to be some cooked lean beef mince that you saw in the photo in the last footage. Now, emotional satisfaction. When we talk about emotional satisfaction with the dry food or the complete raw food diets, the way humans are feeding their dogs now, they're just putting the biscuits in a bowl that's not being reconnected to your dog because when you're just putting food in a bowl, whether it's raw or dry, basically it's not allowing them to perform their instinctive behaviours and their preferred behaviours. So I want to show you with respect to emotional satisfaction and I'm also going to mention here Adaptal. Adaptal is a synthetic pheromone. I've talked about this before. But when we're talking about emotional satisfaction, this is also a really good thing to have on hand. So I'm just... Um, spraying the dog's beds here and I'm turning them upside down so the alcohol can evaporate but we can keep that pheromone in there until it's ready to be then turned over in case the, the dogs have finished their food puzzle toys and then they're going to go and rest. And this is a really, <clears throat> a really nice little additional trick if you like to just do one spray on 
the part of the collar of your dog's coat, leave it for 15 minutes and Morty's got a bandana with the same sort of thing. So that's emotional satisfaction with respect to, and that's a nice sniff from Morty, giving them some adaptal synthetic pheromone. Um, and that should be a staple in every household where a human has a dog in their life. Now, when we're talking about making conscious decisions, um, it's really important that the, the food that is um, provided for our dogs is not, is not just emotionally satisfying in a palatable way, but it's also helping our dogs with their natural behaviours. But that chewing raw bones is so much uh, is so much more because it's cleaning their teeth, and that's really important. I'll talk about that later. But look, here is a really easy breakfast idea. I eat oatmeal in the mornings, and it's a really healthy way to go. It's a, f a fulfilling meal. Some flax seeds, ground up, just a little sprinkle on the top there, and I'm using the licking mats for the dogs, so they're not just getting it in a bowl. And the action of licking promotes a calming effect. It's something that can help dogs that may groom or over groom um, to help redirect that in a really productive way. And here's another, another um, example of emotional satisfaction. And just a, a lunch with an omelette, and that's, that was a meal for a human. But look, that was actually presented in a way, and you can see that it's got a good source of carbohydrate, we've got some fibre, and we've also got a protein source, which is a nice scrambled egg, some pieces of scrambled eggs. But the main point is it's promoting not just nutritional adequacy, but it's promoting emotional satisfaction in the way that our dogs are foraging and receiving their food, having their food provided for them that promotes their behaviours that they like to do and that they instinctively need to do. And here's just a variation on that. So I was getting these ready because I was going out. And so I simply just put a portion of their total protein, which is in a cooked protein form, in some food puzzle toys. And as you can see, oh gee, okay, we've got some old bananas there, but I made some banana bread with those. Um, so as you can see, I'm putting that food puzzle toy in the sleeve of this old dressing gown that Morty likes to snuffle in. And this old backpack, that was going to be thrown out. And I thought, well, I'll hang on to that because that can be used as a little food puzzle toy in itself to create an increased degree of difficulty for Morty and he can have all of his food puzzle toys stashed in there and we've got Marco having something that's a little bit more suited to his abilities, his age and his abilities because his vision in one eye is, is um, not as good because of his um, cataracts and things. But here's another variation on just how natural whole foods are used to provide emotional satisfaction but it's from our diet as well and as you can see Marco ha was having the, the, the egg but I thought I'd give Morty some chicken on that occasion as a little bit of a protein source in his food puzzle toys because he doesn't really, um, he doesn't prefer the taste of a raw egg in the way that Marco does. And you can see here Marco's really polished that off. And once again, I'm putting these in, not describing any, any portions or weighing out measurements. That was just one egg. And maybe I could have just separated the white and just provided Marco with the yolk, the nutrients, in, and saved the white for later. Maybe it probably would have been better that way to give him two different um, sources of nutrients and a protein. But it was just one egg and it was just one portion of food for that particular day. So in the grand scheme of things, he's getting nutrition, but we're not overdoing it at the same time. And we're not being paralyzed with fear about what we can and can't feed our dogs. And once again, you can see we've got Morty with his adaptal bandana on. I'm having to go out, so I'm just doing some food puzzle toys for the dogs. And this is a really good, a good um, food puzzle toy, this oven mitt, because what I can do is I can actually pack some meat in there and it can help Morty perform the behaviours that he likes to do, which is chase things, but those behaviours that we've actually diluted out of our dogs, get them to remember how to be a dog again. And so we can see that Marco here is enjoying his food puzzle toy. He really loves his, his uh, little um, concertina caterpillar. But Morty's really getting into this uh, food puzzle toy and he's really getting a lot of emotional satisfaction. So is Marco because they're working for their food. They're doing what dogs do, um, foraging and using their olfactory sense to um, sniff out their food. Now, once again, we've got, I was making some, some dinner in the form of some salmon cakes, so a tin of salmon with some mashed potatoes, and I was going to have some mixed vegetables with that. But this is a great little 
portion of wholesome food that you can say, well, let's give our dogs a little bit of that, and it's presented in a way that's emotionally satisfying on a licking mat. But once again, I might not have had time, so I thought, well, on this day with the leftovers, I'll just put some on a plate, but they're not getting plate fed every day. That might have been because at that time I had to go out or something might have come up and I had to get something prepared quickly. But I had leftovers. And this is also something else that is so underutilised. We all sit down and relax in the evenings, watch TV, but what do our dogs get to do? And so we've got some emotionally satisfying food puzzle toys here. And I just want you to listen to the sniffing. That is so emotionally satisfying for our dogs. And this is so underutilised. And you can still hear the sniffing. I amplified that sound just so we could hear what was going on. And to me, seeing my dogs performing behaviours that they do as dogs, that reconnects me with my dogs. And that is what I'm talking about at one, with respect to taking one step at a time but that one step in itself is a universal approach because not only not only are we reconnecting with our dogs with respect to their diet, we also understand on that reconnection fractal, if you like, that as we step out and see more pixels and more real-time events happening associated with the emotional satisfaction that that food was giving the dogs, we also take a step back and see on that fractal there's millions and millions of little pixels and interconnected moments, if you like, that are related to our conscious decisions when we're choosing whole foods for our dogs. And we might actually say, okay, I'm gonna make a conscious decision, I wanna feed my dog a vegan dry food, because then we're gonna reduce the suffering of animals and things like that. But we also have to look at the global perspective of the pathway and the choices that we make, the way we're reprioritizing things. And so if we're reprioritizing things in a way that we're gonna feed vegan dry food to our dogs, then of course, that might be palatable, but is it going to be able to be provided in a way that's emotionally satisfying? Most humans feed their dogs with dry food and put it in a cup, so we're still not providing our dogs with the things that they need as a species to make sure that they're behaviourally healthy as well as having um, an, a healthy environment to live in. And when we think about vegan dry food, that is nutritionally deficient in some very important amino acids, taurine and carnitine for a just to name a couple. And there's also a link between vegan dry food and dilated hearts in dogs, dilated cardiomyopathy. So then we can see if we go down that pathway and we think, okay, we're trying to be conscious and, and reduce the suffering of animals being fed, being slaughtered to, to feed dogs and cats, then what we see if we're manipulating dogs even further by making them adapt even more and restricting their emotional preferences, their taste preferences, their behaviour preferences, their environmental preferences, their genetic preferences. And what we're doing is we're then saying, okay, those vegan foods might be deficient, but we can add supplements. And it's irrespective of whether they're supplements made by or made and recommended by a veterinarian or a nutritionist, what they're doing, they're still expensive. So your cheap dry food is now becoming more expensive. But what we're doing is we're, we're actually not taking into account the global perspective where if everybody just changed over to a dry food diet, then that is the, the level of suffering that can be increased um, because of all of the humans that across the globe that are working in places like meat processing plants, um, abattoirs and things like that. Um, and what we do then is we actually divide us from humanity, from each other, um, and we then say that we're more ethical than other people because we feed our dogs vegan dry food or we are vegans or vegetarians ourselves so what that does it actually reduces the empathy and compassion that we have and disconnects us from other human beings and so by taking a step back one step at a time and reconnecting with our dogs we can then see that one pixel of that one step which is a universal approach when we take a really really big step back and we see what where that pathway leads us simply by reconnecting with our dogs. Because remember, we might be reprioritising to put our dogs on a vegan diet, but that means that we're still manipulating dogs and we're reprioritising based on one, one thing that is not um, overall reducing suffering, but it 
can also be increasing suffering in other areas that we may not really be aware of. So after all of that, let's have a look at some one pot cooking ideas that I have to help us get reconnected with our dogs. Now, organic free range eggs, here we go. We're just making another meal. And this is great because I gave a taste test to Marco. Yes, he likes that. Morty was a little bit hesitant. So then you can say, all right, well, I know that one dog isn't particularly um, preferring that type of food raw. So let's cook it up and let's see how that goes. And of course, if you're making a your meal for yourself, which I was, um, and then we're using this and then I'm just adding some extra vegetables for the dogs just to create, create additional fibre. But they're getting some whole foods there and it's from one pot. And you can see here that there's some chicken broth and I've just put some chicken broth and some veggies in there for them to have a little bit of a snack. And so the, the great thing about making conscious choices of transitioning over to whole foods is also that what you're doing is you're reprioritising your choices as well, but you're, you're, you're also utilising um, something in a way that's also easy to do and easy to prepare, which also reconnects you with your dog. And here I'm just preparing something in the form of some rice, black rice and some uh, brown rice. And that's just going, going to go into the microwave. And that's really easy. And I've got a really great low glycemic um, index of carbohydrate in that whole food. And here's another one, whole wheat pasta. This is certified organic. And I think that was less than $2 at my local supermarket. But checking labels is a really good thing to do. And of course, responsibly fish tuna. Um, so we all can all make decisions and take action in a way that's not increasing suffering but um, is also reducing suffering. Um, and of course, um, here we have just some potato. I was cooking some potatoes and just to make that more palatable, I thought I'll just put a little bit of tuna brine over the top to make that more pal palatable and also cool down the potatoes for the dogs. And of course, here's a nice little snack again. Now these are just all ideas that you can do but what it's doing, it's reconnecting with your dog because as I mentioned, we're reprioritizing the way we look at the word diet and we're transitioning away from dry food and uh, raw food or wet food, pet food, including treats, where um, we're also um, including a range of different varieties of foods. And here you can see, this is just an example. I've got tuna brine there, the chicken broth, I've got the vegetables and the chicken, and that cooked chicken I will use for all of the food puzzle toys that you saw in the video when I was talking about emotional satisfaction. And here again, I was just making a little bit of a tuna casserole just for a meal for two, and put some potato, mashed potatoes over the top, and I had some mashed potatoes left over, so lo and behold, let's put that in a plastic tub, and I can put that on the licking mats, and I can actually have the leftovers as well with different things. So. So when, by simply reconnecting with our dogs through the food we eat, we also see how we're improving the choices for ourselves and we're also creating less waste. We're, we're not throwing out leftovers. We're not throwing out things because we don't think that what we have cooked could possibly be nutritious for our dogs. Um, and when we're reconnecting with our dogs, we're being more thoughtful and conscious of our choices as well. And that helps to reduce suffering and um, of other animal species. But rather than actually changing things very quickly and just saying, okay, I'm going to go vegetarian or I'm going to go vegan or I'm going to do this, we can self-sabotage and that disconnects us from the process that we're wanting to achieve. And so by just taking one step at a time again, by reconnecting with our dogs and just adding one or two of these things that I'm showing you now is going to make sure or ensure that you are staying reconnected, not just to your dog, but also you're not disconnecting yourself from um, the suffering of other animal species, as well as the potential suffering of other humans across the planet with respect to the situation that they might be living in with their employment, where they're working or they're just their life situation. Um, compared to other humans that might be more fortunate just simply because of the geographical location where they were born. 
Now, our, our choices, I mentioned, also creates us, uh, our choices also allows us to make conscious decisions over our nutritional needs and what we decide to, um, to make for ourselves. But here again, I wanted to talk about preferences, and we all have preferences as humans, what foods we like. Sometimes they're not always the good foods that we prefer. But here I've got some oatmeal, some porridge on one side with some chia seeds, and I've got some sardines on the other side. And of course, both of the dogs prefer to go to the protein, but Marco loves his carbohydrates, and he particularly loves um, his carbohydrates in the form of a good carbohydrate, which is porridge um, or oatmeal. And they're whole grain rolled oats, as you saw in the first piece of footage. And of course, Morty enjoys the protein much more, but he's still finishing off his carbohydrates and his porridge, but he's also getting some added benefits of the chia seeds, which are in there as well, and they're very nutritious too. So there's just a Kong field for Morty, a couple of Kongs for him, and the licking mat for Marco. Now, the, lean, the other half of the lean mince I cooked and strained it here, and this is a nice little snack, and of course, it's not perfect. I realised I'd better use a ceramic bowl because it's heavier and it can hold the strainer. So strain that little bit of fat off, and that actually made a nice little meal with some cooked pasta that, that I had before. And I simply put the mince into a container with the kitchen towel underneath. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shake that excess off and let that cool down. I'm going to put that either in a cold oven or in a microwave oven where I can shut the door and just leave it there to store it because Morty will jump on the, on the counter. So that's just to store it in a cold oven or a, a microwave that's not turned on of course, and just leave it there until it cools down. And then once that happens, pop that in the fridge. But before you use it, just in a Tupperware container with a lid, and you can shake that and you'll have those nice pieces that can be rolled up into towels or put into their food puzzle toys in an easy way. But once again, what it's doing is it's allowing us to put a total portion of protein which is our dog's preferred macronutrient and then putting it in a way that's emotionally satisfying for them. I also want to talk about just the species of, of protein that we're providing. Beef or chicken, I mean other species that can be demonized for being too fatty as well as beef that could be demonized for being carcinogenic or um, uh, viral viral prions in, in the meat that you know um, can cause viral diseases. But when you hear information like that, it, what it's doing is it's also causing fear and it's also blaming an animal species that has actually endured suffering to, um, to be slaughtered and fed as a protein source to dogs and cats and also humans. But that animal, animal is being blamed um, despite that animal enduring that suffering. And so by, by looking at the species of meat and just be mindful of how much you're giving and ensuring that you're not wasting it, whatever you're buying, you're eating and you're consuming all of it. Um, that's a way that we can then reduce suffering and not increase it by using a whole variety of, of animal species um, to eat, if you like, um, and feed our dogs and cats. The other thing I will say about beef is that with respect to vaccinations, and not just dogs, but also humans. so. The animal products from cows, cattle, um, are used in vac vaccine protocols to mimic the natural living environment that a virus would replicate in. And so that's why vaccines are used with the components of, say, blood or tallow and things like that. So it's not just for animal vaccines as well, it's for human vaccines. So we can see that if our dogs are being vaccinated with vaccines that have got beef constituents in them of some form or another and we're building and they're building um, an immune response to that because the vaccine has to um, the vaccine has to be recognized by the immune system then of course we may also be seeing allergies in our dogs if we feed them beef so that's just something else to think about with respect to the cycle that continues um, despite our conscious choices as best we can make them. But once again, reconnecting with our dogs, 
encompasses a global perspective. Now, the last piece of footage that I want to share with you is prebiotics. And this is a really um, wonderful thing that we can do for our dogs. And prebiotics are simply the soluble, indigestible fibre that dogs eat. And here you can see I bought some herbs um, and Morty went straight for the cat grass. So he's really enjoying that. He's having a little nibble because that's going to help the gut flora in his intestine be nice and happy and healthy and promote the strains of bacteria that are good, um, that promote um, uh, optimal digestibility and um, absorption of the nutrients that we're feeding our dogs. So oh, a little nice little exercise is to, and there's Marco having a look. Now Marco didn't eat them. He, he may not like to eat them that's fine but it doesn't mean that Marco still can't have them in his diet and so a great idea is to just trim some and just pop them in mixed in with their meal and it's like adding a little salad if you like and that term was mentioned in a little video that I've got in the link below um, on how to grow some cat grass for your cat or your dog and once again you can see Morty's really enjoying this and this is wonderful so a little exercise and I would urge you to do this to reconnect with your dog, is to just buy a few little things. And here you can see in the front, Morty sniffing the parsley. I've got some lavender there. He's pointing them out. The lemongrass is just in front of that. Um, and Morty's had a nibble on that. Just to the right, we've got some mint. I've got the basil that's flowering and also the cat grass down the bottom. But then if we have a little bit of a swing round again, we can see there's some more cat grass that I've put in another pot. And I had another spare pot so I thought well I'll put the other mint in there and we're just starting a little another starter pack if you like of some of a herb garden and we're starting with just a few things that we know we will like to put in our foods but they're also very safe for dogs as well so when we reconnect with our dogs through the food that they're eating what we're doing is we're transitioning over to whole foods to a home-based diet in a way that's not going to cause suffering to our dogs um, with respect to their gastrointestinal tract. We're not going to exacerbate any other medical conditions that they might have. We're also having more open and conscious discussions with our veterinarians. We're not just turning up to get the vaccination, the anal sacs checked, the nails trimmed, and then, oh, I better pick up another bag of dry food. We're not just having that conversation with veterinarians. And veterinarians, we're, we're honing our skills. We're broadening our skills. And what we're doing is we're becoming more conscious because we are including the science, but we're going beyond science by knowing what we know now and saying, OK, we need to align this science with a higher level of intelligence and gain wisdom from that. So our dogs and cats aren't eating foods, processed, over-processed foods that are full of carbohydrate fillers and protein fillers that are cheap and extremely poor quality, causing our dogs and cats the vast majority of illnesses that we commonly see as as veterinarians today. So the other thing is we're also circling back and starting with that one step at a time by providing prebiotics for our dogs in the form of lovely, soluble, indigestible fibre like cat grass. We're creating um, emotional satisfaction for our dogs because we're looking at them as a species. And that means that even though um, we might... Be, in some instances, we might be feeding them the most expensive vegan food on the planet, the most expensive grass-fed cuts of rump steak. But if that person is then leaving their dog alone for 15, 16 hours of the day without any social or human contact, then the emotional satisfaction of that dog as a species is sadly lacking simply because of that lack of understanding and reconnection of that human with their dog. So not just food, but also the way we see our dogs as a species is what is going to help to reconnect us with our dogs, stay reconnected, and also reduce the disconnection that we see among other humans across the globe. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll talk again soon.